This quoll, this crocodile, this snake, even this hecking dog have one thing in common. They all share the same culprit, namely this facially challenged gentleman, the cane toad. This invasive tank has steamrolled its way across Australia with little pushback because anything that bites it soon meets its maker. Several things have been tried to slow it down, but almost nothing works. But there is one solution that has not been thought of, one animal actually, that might be crazy enough to handle it. The ball-biting honey badger. Now the cane toad was actually never supposed to be in Australia in the first place. It was brought in during the 1930s because someone thought it would be a good idea to hire a toxic amphibian as pest control. The goal was simple. Throw cane toads at beetles that were ruining sugarcane fields. There was only one problem. The toads could not even reach the beetles. The beetles lived high up on the sugarcane stalks, and the cane toads are built like overweight potatoes with legs. So, instead of eating the pests, they just shrugged their shoulders and walked off into the wild. And that is where Australia's problems really began. Cane toads breed like they are trying to unlock a gosh darn achievement. One female can lay tens of thousands of eggs at a time and almost anything that looks like water is good enough for them. They spread fast too, sometimes more than 40 kilometers in a year, which is impressive for an animal shaped like a tiny beanbag chair. Today, there are hundreds of millions of them. You can literally throw a cane toad in any direction in Northern Australia and probably hit another cane toad. But the real nightmare is the toxin. Cane toads have giant poison glands full of a chemical cocktail that shuts down the heart of almost anything that bites them. Snakes, monitor lizards, quolls, freshwater crocodiles, even your dog, if it gets curious, all of them can drop instantly from one bad snack decision. And because nothing wants to risk that, the toads just keep spreading with no predators holding them back. Fewer native animals, more cane toads and entire food chains getting folded like cheap lawn chairs. This is the mess Australia has been stuck with for almost a century now. But what if there was an animal that actually does not care about toxins, danger, pain, or common sense? Enter the honey badger. If there is one creature on this planet reckless enough to look at a cane toad and think, yes, I want to bite that, it is this guy. The honey badger operates on pure violence and terrible decision-making. They wake up angry, they stay angry, and they go to bed angry. They fight lions, leopards, hyenas, and entire beehives, and rob other animals of their food like a furry criminal. They are compact like Danny DeVito and have the confidence of an elephant. Their skin is insanely tough and ridiculously loose. So when something grabs them, they can twist around inside their own skin suit and bite the attacker in the face. Their pain tolerance is something out of a myth. Honey badgers have taken cobra bites that would kill a full-grown human, passed out for a while, then woken up and continued eating the snake that bit them. Diet-wise, they are basically a biological garbage disposal. Snakes, scorpions, rodents, lizards, birds, honeycomb, rotten meat, fruits, random leftovers. If it exists and is organic, they will try to eat it. They have the same self-control as a drunk raccoon in a dumpster behind a restaurant. And this is what makes them interesting for a terrible idea, like Project Cane Toad. They are smart, they are fearless, and they have a sense of smell that can track down almost anything. If you released honey badgers into cane toad country, they would absolutely find them. And knowing honey badgers, they would absolutely try to eat them. Not for ecological balance, not to save Australia, just out of spite. So the real question becomes this, what actually happens when a creature this chaotic bites into one of the most toxic amphibians on earth? To find out, we need to talk about the cane toad's main party trick, bufotoxin. And bufotoxin is not just poison. It is Australia's version of a jump scare. When this stuff hits a mammal, it goes straight for the heart, like it owes it money. The victim starts getting dizzy, the heartbeat goes off rhythm, muscles start twitching, and within 15 minutes, the whole system disconnects from Earth's lobby. It is basically a biological delete button for anything stupid enough to bite first and ask questions later. But the real fun begins when you look at how the cane toad delivers the toxin. The poison sits inside two giant glands behind its shoulders. When something bites down, those glands fire off a pressurized jet of chemical chaos straight into the predator's mouth. The toad does not need to aim or bite or spray. 
Its defense is literally just sitting there and letting you make the terrible decision yourself. And the toxin actually scales with toad size, and Australia has some absolute unit-sized cane toads. So a small cane toad comes with a small poison blast. A medium cane toad, a medium-sized reason to regret everything. But a full-grown adult cane toad is basically a toxic water balloon with tiny legs. One bite from that thing can kill even large dogs. And considering honey badgers are smaller, the dosage is not looking great. So what about the honey badgers' so-called venom resistance? Honey badgers can tank bites from black mambas like it is a mild inconvenience. They can take puff adder venom and go back to finishing their snake snack two hours later. Their bodies can handle some types of venom very well, but bufotoxin is not snake venom. It does not care about their pain tolerance. It does not care about their thick skin. It skips the whole drama and goes straight for the heart and nervous system. And there is no solid scientific proof that honey badgers can safely eat cane toads. In fact, nothing suggests they would survive a good chomp on an adult toad. Their venom resistance and gut is impressive, but bufotoxin plays by completely different rules. So here is the realistic outcome. A honey badger biting a cane toad is basically entering a dangerous sweepstakes where the grand prize is instant death. They might survive a tiny taste, but a full bite into a big toxic potato is almost certainly fatal. And that is a pretty major issue for the whole idea of weaponizing honey badgers. Australia's ecosystem is already running on fumes. Cane toads showed up almost a century ago, and they wiped out predators that had been stable for millions of years. Monitor lizards, even large birds, they all died the first time they tried to eat a cane toad. And when you remove that many predators from a system, everything under them collapses. Herbivores spike, pests spike, invasive species spike, and entire food chains crumble like someone yanked out the bottom row of a Jenga tower. And this is exactly why adding honey badgers would be the worst possible move. Australia's native wildlife is already hanging on by a thread. Small marsupials, ground-nesting birds, slow-breeding reptiles. Anything fragile is struggling to survive in a landscape still recovering from the cane toad invasion. Adding a brand new predator on top of all that is like trying to stop a fire by throwing wood at it. It will just make it worse. Honey badgers would not act like a surgical solution. They would not target cane toads with military precision. They would do what honey badgers always do. Hunt absolutely everything they can overpower. And the creatures that go first are always the small, vulnerable ones that have no defenses, no numbers, and no recovery time. The easy prey gets erased long before a single cane toad even notices the badgers exist. And that brings us to the very uncomfortable part. Australia already made this exact mistake once. They introduced a species they thought would help. The cane toad. It spread everywhere, killed everything that touched it, devastated ecosystems, and left a century of damage that biologists are still trying to repair. Introducing honey badgers would just be the same disaster in a different flavor. Another animal that does not belong. Another predator that ignores the rules another unstoppable force that would add a whole new layer of destruction on top of the one Australia is still dealing with. And if you actually released them, well, that is where things get truly chaotic. So, let us imagine this for real. 1,000 honey badgers released across Australia, not as a joke, but as a desperate last-ditch attempt to control cane toads. And what actually happens next is not ecological balance, but pure, unfiltered chaos. If the first wave of badgers lands in the Northern Territory, they adapt instantly. The place is full of burrows, water holes, small prey, and wide open terrain. Basically, a giant playground for tiny psychopaths. And this is already the problem. The badgers do not look at a cane toad and think, yes, this is my destiny. They hunt small mammals, ground nesting birds, reptiles, eggs, anything they can bully into becoming calories. Cane toads are everywhere, but honey badgers are smart enough to smell the toxin. Most of them avoid biting the toads entirely. They will flip them, slap them, and chase them around like toxic stress balls. But very few will actually commit to the bite. So within a month, the badgers have spread in every direction. Not because they are hunting cane toads, but because they are following natural prey. And all this does is put even more pressure on wildlife that was already collapsing thanks to the cane toad invasion. And if even a handful of badgers make it into urban Australia, things go from ecological disaster to human disaster. Honey badgers are fearless, opportunistic, 
and destructive. They rip open trash bins, raid pet food, break into sheds, fight neighborhood dogs, terrorize entire suburbs, and cause more property damage than the cane toads ever managed. And since each badger needs a territory the size of a small country just to stay calm, all you get is overlapping enter and die zones and non-stop badger fistfights. Meanwhile, the cane toads continue living their best lives, breeding, expanding, and acting completely unbothered. So even 1,000 honey badgers would not save Australia. They would not stop the cane toad invasion, and honestly, they would barely survive the attempt themselves. And the worst part is that cane toads are still winning today. So yes, the quoll, the crocodile, the snake, and even that poor dog in the cold open will all continue to fall for that same toxic potato. And our honey badgers? They would probably just repeat the disaster. Now, if you enjoyed today's video, then I'm sure you'll enjoy some of the others on screen as well. And I'll see you in the next one.